Quad 6.6. As it turns out, I am still learning. And this quad with this particular combination, which to me looks a little funny. You've got these um, tiny little motors with tiny little props on a big 150 millimeter frame. But this combination, as funny as it looks, taught me a lot about what makes quads, what gives them a characteristic that I like in terms of the handling and the flight dynamics. So I had been trying these motors. So these are the RCN Power um, 1002 motors, and these are the highest KV, the 22,000 KV. And I've been flying them with these Gemfan uh, 2015 props. And overall, I've been impressed. Um, this, I guess, one of the parts I learned. I've been impressed with the power that these little motors actually have. Um, for my backyard, for my style of freestyle, I actually have enough power out of these motors. I can catch everything as I want to. I'm not feeling like I have to get into throttle really early after maneuvers, and the punch out's just fine. It's it's taught me something. Granted, the flight time's a little bit shorter than what I would like, but it's good enough. It's not terrible, it is good enough. The main complaint I had about this was when I was flying this on 90 millimeter frame and even more so on an even smaller frame, frame that I flew them on initially, I did not like the way the quad, the quad overall handled in terms of the way it was tracking. So when I was flying it, kind of getting into tight spaces, as small as it was, I was having a hard time flying it in tight spaces like I normally do. It just didn't feel like I could get it to track the way I needed it to. So. I was really excited when these motors came out. So these are the Newbie Drone Flow motors. These are 1102 motor. And I've got them in the higher 19,000 kV variant. And I was really excited about these because these were finally a decent sounding, decent looking 1102 motor with a high enough kV with long enough wires um, to be able to fly some um, 65 millimeter props. So I had recently gotten these um, Aeolus 1102s, and they again are a nice KV, 18,000 KV. But one of the main issues I had with them was the wires are so short. Let's see if I can kind of snug this prop on just for a second to show you. Um, the wires are so short that you can't, it's, I mean, I guess you could probably wedge this onto a build with 65 millimeter props, but you're really going to want to probably um, stretch out the wires, elongate the wires. And so realistically, um, for props where you can just pull the, the motor as is and solder it up, you probably are stuck with a two millimeter prop, two inch props. And with those two inch props, these Aeolus just don't have enough KV. Um, flight time's okay-ish, not really any better than 1002, but they give up some power. And so it's like, this motor, unfortunately, as much potential as it has, the wires, it just comes up short because that's what the wire, the wires come up short. So maybe if you're motivated, you can extend the wires and still enjoy this um, HGLRC1102 motor. But so I was really excited about these flow motors. And so I busted out this frame. This frame is not really a frame I kind of personally wanted to do. Um, somebody asked for this one, I forget who, but this is a 150 millimeter war pig. And it's got, you know, you can see I've got the three hole um, mount on it and it's really thin. It's a two millimeter, th um, two millimeter thin frame or thick frame. And it's just, what that means is that it's just, it's kind of flexy. It doesn't have the best torsional stiffness and you can see just how much I can rock those motors back and forth. And what that means is if you don't have fully perfect props, you're not going to be dealing with the vibration very well. But with these flow motors and the old school gem fan or the clones, these are clones, these are King, uh, King Kong LDRC clones. Um, with this combination on this quad, um, it flies really well. I was totally blown away by how much I loved the way this combination flew in terms of getting the quad to hand handle in the air in terms of like tracking and carving, having the right balance of stability with um, agility that I really like. And I was absolutely loving these 1102s. The thing that I wasn't loving about them is just the limits of these props. These props are so super thin and so floppy and inconsistent in terms of the shaft that you kind of dealing with a couple of things. One of those things is that when you're pressing these on, it's sort of hit or miss, whether it's like too tight or too loose, but you get enough of them that are okay but then in the air, the issues you have is that 
they're good through the mid-range, but as you top out on them, they start like flattening out or oscillating and doing something bad, and so you basically kind of lose the top end. Um, and then also the bar balance on them is kind of variable, and so with sort of a insufficiently stiff frame, I was getting into a little bit of low-grade kind of oscillation issue and definitely giving up some efficiency with them. Um, also, they needed a tune um, because of the, the weird stuff that was going on with them. Despite all that, I really like these flow motors. They are kind of on the heavy side. This is a 3.3 gram motor, which is pretty darn heavy for an 1102. But they also seem like, you know, most of that weight's coming from the bell. You can see just how beefy this bell looks. And I think because of how beefy that bell is, these are probably going to be pretty durable motors, which, you know, in terms of like trade-offs, maybe that's totally worth it if you're carrying some extra weight, but the motor holds up really well and you can fly it for a long time, enjoy it. So, but anyways, getting back to the 1002s, one of the thoughts I had is, well, since I have this build on this 115 millimeter frame, what happens if I take these 1002s with the with the um, 2015 prop, and what if I throw them onto this big frame? And I would never do this normally because you've got so much excess frame for this size prop, but what happens if I do? As it turns out, this starts to handle really, really well. It is not quite as good as the 1102 with the 65mm prop, but it is it is plenty close enough it is plenty close enough to where i absolutely love the way this thing flies it flies great and one of the nice parts about it is these props are so good in terms of the balance they've been super consistent i've been loving how consistently they push on to the 1002 um, motors all of them fit the right amount of snugness the balance has been excellent on them and with that, even though this frame is a little floppy, it flies so smooth that this frame is plenty um, to handle this build, um, which is interesting. But it just flies great. And so as it turns out, my big complaints, honestly, about the 2-inch build, about the 1002 motors with the 2015 props, my big complaint about it, it's not about the motors and the props. It was actually about the frame having too short of a wheelbase. For me, the way I like to fly, the way the handling that I demand out of it in tight spaces, Apparently that 90 millimeter format's just too small of a wheelbase. Now, what does that mean? A couple things. Um, one of those things is I'm gonna try and figure out what is sort of my minimum wheelbase. What's the minimum wheelbase that I need to get the handling I want? So I've got a couple frames drawn up. I've got one that is 110 millimeters and I've got one that's 98 millimeters. And you know, I'm gonna get them cut and try it out and see. So that way I'll have 90, 100, 110, 115, and we'll just compare them. We'll see how they fly. Um, that definitely overall, that upgrades my recommendation on these. I was kind of thinking that these are, you know, in terms of the 1002s with the um, 2015 props, this combination, I was sort of, my mind on it was that the recommendation was, hey, if you really want the small quad, if you really want the two inch quad, go ahead and buy it but to me it felt kind of a little bit more like a novelty quad it was more like you're flying it because you want to fly that size not because you're flying it because it performs that well going up to the bigger frame I can upgrade it I can say that this gets you like 95% of the way there in terms of the tracking and stability that you need to fly this in really tight technical stuff and so I'm upgrading my opinion on these motors. Um, good job, Angry Don, with coming up with the 1002 idea. Um, it's good. It really, really is good. I'm, I learned something. I'm surprised. Efficiency, still a little bit lower than I like, but it's good enough. Um, so what do I mean by efficiency? Um, batteries I've been flying on. I've been flying on these GNB pink label 450s and the yellow label 530s. These batteries, if you weigh them out and you kind of look at the dimensions of them, are basically exactly the same. And lo and behold, the flight time seems exactly the same. I'm kind of really starting to get convinced that this yellow label 530 is really just a rebadge of this 450. Maybe they did something different in the chemistry, but it's not enough to make actual difference in the air. So on these batteries, I am getting over three minutes without having to baby it. So that's good enough. Um, if you're flying and dumping out batteries in three minutes or less, you're gonna beat up your batteries. So 
I think this is, although I like this form factor in terms of these aren't very long, these are a little bit more square than some of the other ones. Um, these batteries aren't quite enough, so I wouldn't quite recommend them. I'd recommend a slightly bigger battery. So next up then is going to be um, these batteries. So this is a GNB 520 pink label and the RDQ 525. These batteries, if you measure them out between the GNB and the RDQ, these measure out the same, weigh the same, and uh, flight time for overall, these are basically the same. Um, so on these, I'm getting like 330 to 340 in terms of flight time without babying them. Definitely not getting the four minutes, but 330, 340. The other battery I've been flying is the um, Tattoo R-Line. This is a five, they rate this as a 500 milliamp battery, but actually weight wise, it is, I believe heavier than these 520s. Let me just double check that really quick. Come on, scale, turn on. All right, double checking 14.27 for the Tattoo. Oh, about the same, 14.6. So 14.3 and 14.6. So essentially these two batteries weigh the same. Um, I do like the Tattoo because it's a shorter battery. It's more square. It's a little bit thicker. I like the weight distribution of being kind of more tucked in. The one reason though I would maybe consider the GNB is because GNB is now selling direct and you can actually get these batteries dirt cheap if you buy a bunch of them. The difference between these two that I'm flying there, now that I've beat them up real good, I've flown a, a bunch of these. Um, in both cases, flight time, I'm getting 330 to 340, but the Tattoo R-Line does not sag as much. This one holds its voltage and then gets right to the end and be ready to land, because when this thing starts to dump, get ready to land, because it dumps fast. On the GNB, they do do that kind of initially, but they now that I've Put enough cycles through them these sag a little bit more it's not horrible if you like gnb and you and you want to save some money or if you want to get um, gnb 27 connectors right off the bat the gnb battery is really not a bad option i haven't tried them yet but gnb has this battery um, in a red label and i'm guessing it's probably going to be the same thing they did over here so with the 450 um, pink label they really I'm sure they just seems like they rewrapped it in yellow they've got a battery that looks just like this one now wrapped in a red and red is their highest C rating so this is rated as like 80 the um, yellow is rated at 90 the reds labeled as 100 on the C rating they probably did the same thing but um yeah it's, it's kind of your call on between these two if the Tattoo R-Line, if you could get them with GNB 27, I would just stick with these. The other thing though, is that um, with the GNBs, these will slide into your whoop frames. Unfortunately, the Happy Model whoop frame will not accept this Tattoo R-Line battery. So keep that in mind too. So not quite four minutes, but 330, 340, not too bad. So um, last thing to talk about, that I wanna talk about, and this is this this is, to me is kind of the shame of it all. We've got the 1002, and then we've got the Gem Fan 2015 prop. It's an excellent prop, and with an excellent prop, this motor can fly excellent as long as your frame is big enough. Apparently, new thing I learned. We've also got the 1203. Um, and for the 1203, we also have an excellent prop, the Emax um, Avia prop, three inch prop. These motors with an excellent prop, they fly excellent. Surprise, surprise. The prop we're missing is for the 1102, 1103 size motors. We do have, you can still find some uh, gem fans, the old, old OG gem fans, but this prop is not an excellent prop. This prop does fly well enough, but it is, we need a new one. And I think we probably actually want, not a 65 millimeter, but we want a 60, 60 millimeter, I think. Because I think when you build it properly in terms of modern shapes and the decent enough thickness, I, I, I think you probably want a 60 millimeter to make it easy enough to swing. That's my guess. Not 100% sure, but that's my guess. But in my mind then, if we're looking at these, 
there is not really any compelling reason why the 1102 shouldn't be every bit as good as these other um, motors. The, the real limiter here is that for whatever reason, they decided, just manufacturers decided to bail on the 65 millimeter prop before they ever gave us a good one. These are just kind of one and done. I mean, they fly okay. Um, they've got the issues with the balance on and off, like it's hit or miss. And then also, crashing wise, these are just kind of one and done. Um, you crash onto anything with any kind of like uh, firmness to it, and you're gonna put some big dings and that prop is gonna be done. They're very easy to bend, all the rest of it. On the other hand, these Gemfan 2015s, these are not one and done. You can bash these around a little bit and you're gonna get some flights out of them. Um, and then even when they do ding, you can just pull out your lighter, kind of heat it up a little bit, and, and you can salvage a lot of these. Same thing on the Emacs Avia props. These are a little bit delicate, but not nearly as delicate as the gem fans. And on the top end, if you throw these props on a motor that can spin it out, they don't do all that bad stuff the top end. They don't start fluttering and flattening out or whatever it is that these gem fans are doing. Same thing with the Avia prop. The Avia prop, you can throw it on a motor that can power right through it. I've flown this on 3S 1203s. And even when you power right through the prop, they still fly okay. They don't do bad things at the top end. So we're just so close to being there. It's like, finally, we've got an 1102 that's a decent motor. I don't count the beta FPV motor. I'm sorry. I know that motor, the beta FPV 1102 has been out with 18,000 kV, but that's just beta FPV motors. Just, it's just such garbage. I just never considered that a legitimate option. But this is a legitimate option, and we seriously need a legitimate prop to go through it. But anyways... And HGLRC, make your wires just just that much longer. Seriously, make them that much longer, and you probably have an excellent motor. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'll link them someday. All right, that's all I got. So, um, kind of final current thoughts on these. I still need to throw some other props. I need to throw like the um, Azzy Triblade uh, 40 millimeter. I need to throw these in a Whoop, fly those around, see how they do. But my final current thoughts on these um, RCN Power 1002s, maybe a little low on efficiency, but the power is there, the fly, flight time, the um, not flight time, but the, the power is there, the flight characteristics are there, prop is excellent, go for it. Numi Drone 1102, a little on the heavy side, but it's also an excellent motor. Um, if you're willing to deal with some of the issues with the prop, go for it as well. Hopefully we get a prop. Hopefully this motor becomes popular enough that, hey Numi Drone, Make us a prop. Seriously, do it. It'll be good. I promise you, it will be very, very good. Newbie Drone, just make us a prop. Or Gem Fan, if you're out there, make us a prop. And, you know, 12 to 3 is still good also. Um, but these things are, these are big motors. These are like 5 grams versus like 2 point something, you know, versus 3. 3.3, 3.4. You know, these are big, chunky motors. All right, I'm going to stop babbling. Until next time, cheers.